continue to practice uh, Buddhism, practice meditation, or whatever you call it, it is important to have a proper uh, foundation, uh, ground. So as a practitioner uh, of Buddhism, the, the most important uh, foundation is, is the human life. We call it precious uh, human life. Uh, without this human life, we cannot uh, do any practice. So what it's saying is that uh, when you have this precious human life, you have to uh, realize and discover it and, and, and uh, how important this is. And, and then we have to uh, use for meaningful purpose, uh, 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 not just as a, like a coming and going thing. Uh, and I have this, this will come and then next will come, you know, go through, you know, it's not like just uh, our sort of daily life, but uh, the precious human life in Buddhism, it says that uh, it's not just, uh, it will not just, just happen, you know, without cause and conditions. The life that we have, uh, we already put so much, uh, you know, cause and condition it requires so much, uh, you know, merit, so much uh, practice, uh, otherwise uh, it won't happen. But now we have this precious human life and uh, so also this is not, uh, uh, you know, uh, permanent. It's, uh, it's going to end uh, sooner or later. So therefore, uh, they're saying that we shouldn't just ignore it and uh, try to enjoy as much as possible, but uh, use something that beneficial not only for this life, but also after. So that's why it is very important to, to realize what are the cause and conditions of this precious human life. And then there's different knowledges that how and why it's so important to achieve uh, with the different uh, examples, for example, uh, if you look in this world, um, there are so many lives. A uh, life that lives in the water, life that flies in the air and underground, you know. But uh, within those different types of uh, life, uh, the human being, a uh, human life is, has the, the most, one of the, the most number. Uh, you know, the other living beings, we can't count. They're countless, but human being, is uh, has a very limited number so therefore uh, the reason why it has a limited number is because uh, it's not easy to achieve this uh, precious human life so therefore uh, we have to uh, the first we have to realize that it is not easy to achieve and then we have to realize that we have now that we don't want to waste it because we never know whether we'll have the same precious human life that we have now in the future or, or, or not you know so and also uh, not only that whether we will have a precious human life in the future or not is actually up to us you know what we do uh, uh, what kind of uh, actions that we are you know um, encounter uh, this lifetime is very much depend on you know all the, the things that are going to happen in the in the future that's what uh, Buddhist uh, believe uh, a lot of other religious they they believe that uh, you know there's a uh, God that have the power to create everything it's uh, everything's out of your hand you know so it totally up to God what kind of life they wanted to create for your future wh uh, whatever you're going through whether you are a happy life whether you have a sad life everything's God made it you know but uh, and Buddha says uh, slightly different because he said uh, everything is coming from cause and conditions there's no uh, one individual that has a power to create uh, uh, everything so everything coming from cause and condition those cause condition is uh, as we created you know so basically therefore our cause and we are the creator for ourselves you know and that happens in the past and will happen in the in the future so therefore if we want to have a better life 
a happier life, peaceful life for the future. It's uh, up to us that we can, you know, whether we will uh, create for that future or not. So here, uh, actually more precisely, uh, the precious human life in Buddhism uh, talks a little more detail about the, how it is precious is because, uh, uh, you know, uh, they describe in mentally and, 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 and physically, uh, physically the precious human life has to be uh, free from certain, you know, uh, business or obstacles. There are 18 different types. Uh, and then uh, mentally you have to have a three devotions, you know. Uh, once we have these, um, what do you call, conditions, then we can uh, recognize or, or call ourselves we have the precious human life. So here, what it really said in the teaching is uh, the, the first object of our meditation is the precious human life and we have to realize and think that this is extremely in, difficult to achieve and easy to, easy to end. So therefore I wanted to use for a meaningful purpose. And then the next, second part is um, is impermanent. You know, we may think, yeah, as I said earlier, uh, we do have the precious human life now, and uh, if this is end the way it is, doesn't matter. We will have a next again. But do we know that we will have the same precious human life again? That's very difficult to say, and especially. In this life, if you are not doing, uh, if you if you are not uh, cultivating a merit or uh, you know positive uh, um, virtues, then the chance is uh, very little that we have a precious human life. So therefore, uh, you know, uh, we want you to use when we have it instead of waiting for you know next uh, chance, next opportunity to have a have a precious uh, human life. So it says the human life is impermanent and not only the human life is impermanent but everything else is impermanent. We know that is very obvious. Uh, every existence that we see in this world, either it's outer appearances or inner uh, consciousness or mind, nothing is everlasting and everything is subject to uh, a change. Uh, you know, uh, the impermanent is actually one of the, the, the core of Buddha's uh, teaching. When he talked about the four seals, the first thing is uh, all compounded things are impermanent. So that includes everything, outer appearances, inner beings, everything is a subject to change. No, nothing is uh, uh, going to last forever, you know. So this is one of the important thing that we should uh, uh, remember in mind, mind, especially if you believe, you know, karma, uh, karma cause and effect. Uh, so, you know, impermanent has uh, the the gross level uh, part of the impermanent is very obvious. Everybody knows that uh, things are changing. Not nothing is. Uh, lasting forever you know when we look at our seasons and, and you know days and night and the year and all those everything morning and evening everything is subject to change so we know that when we look at our life from the uh, little baby to, to, to teenager and then you know middle age all old and then uh, die so nobody stays uh, a baby nobody stays uh, the teenager, nobody stays all age for, for permanently, everything is a subject to change. And then when we get up in the morning, it's morning, but the morning is not everlasting. Again, and after a while it'd be, you know, noon and then, then, then night and everything's changed. Same like a summer, very hot weather, but that's not last forever. And then when winter comes, you know, those things are obvious. You don't really need to talk about, and everybody knows, but then the knowing is one thing, but then do we really realize that everything is changing and we have to do something, you know. So, and then the settle, settle level, 
part is, is very, you know, uh, subtle and we don't really realize. For example, you know, aging. Like if you're staring in somebody's face for 12 hours, you, you, mo you won't notice the aging. You know, it's, it's very subtle. For example, like growing fl flower. If you, even you, if you're staring uh, two, three days, you won't notice it, but, but it's changing, right? If you look at the last week, and this week it totally changed the flowers, changed plants and everything. So there are uh, different levels of, uh, of, of impermanent, but everything is impermanent. So what this telling is that whatever you have, no matter even if you have a luxury life, you know, you're enjoying so much, but it's not going to last forever. So therefore you should look uh, uh, deeper and see, is there anything that is going to last uh, yes. that is real yes. happiness you know so that's why the will come in the next uh, the, the second one is impermanent uh, it says uh, impermanent is like uh, you know uh, bubbles water bubbles of water so we never know when are we going and, and not only the impermanent thing but the, the one thing in our life is uh, very unpredictable you know uh, and everybody know that we are changing we are aging uh, we are going to die but nobody knows when we are going to die you know so that's why the great yogi milarepa who achieved enlightenment in one lifetime says you never know you have no single reason or proof that can tell you which comes first tomorrow or next life so that means you know uh we have no guarantee how long we are going to last you know either we're going to last uh, 10 days or 10 years or 100 years you know so nobody knows so therefore with understanding of impermanent and we should practice practice the dharma create uh, a positive attitude positive cause and conditions that produce the happiness for our future lives and also for our uh, re uh, the rest of our our, our, our life as well <clears throat> So, and then the, the next question is, uh, then you may say, it's okay, when this life ends, I will have another one, you know, so, but then, as I said, the, the next topic uh, here is um, um, karma, you know, the, I know, uh, you know, and in Buddhist, Buddhism, the karma is, uh, is the most uh, important element of uh, Buddha's teaching, as opposed to, uh, you know, uh, the creator. Uh, everything is karma in Buddhism. The karma means cause and effect, you know. So now that we know that we are going to, now that we know that we have a precious human life, and then pre that precious human life is not going to last forever, it's going to end. So what we're supposed to do now, and then we look, what will happen if this precious human life ends, you know? So then you have to look back our lives, what you have done so far, you know? How much uh, virtues that you have created in this lifetime, that you have some sort of insur insurance that you will have a better life? Or how much negative that you have done negative cause and condition that you may think or risk of falling into you know a, a worse life so so that's why now uh, what we're supposed to do is uh, <clears throat> you know uh, well in order to talk about these things of course you have to believe somehow uh, you know uh, life after life uh, I know, uh, you know, a lot of other uh, religious don't believe. Once you're dead, then you're permanently dead. You know, if you are uh, a good person, go to heaven, and you're therefore permanently heavenly. You know, and then if you, you know, committed sin, and you would be in hell for permanently. You know, but Buddhism, um, uh, we don't. Uh, 
uh, Buddha actually did not uh, describe that, you know. So the, the now it's up to us whether we want it to be a better life or worse life. Although uh, the ultimate aim of the Buddhism or Buddha's practice of the Buddhism is to achieve enlightenment. Uh, achieve enlightenment means uh, uh, to free from suffering, uh, you know, uh, the ultimate liberation, uh, you know, uh, just, just, just like uh, the enlightened beings. So for, uh, for, and in, in Buddhism we have a samsara and nirvana, you know. Nirvana is uh, free from suffering, completely abandoned all the suffering uh, that achieve real, uh, happiness and uh, ultimate happiness and realization that in, enlightened. And then the samsara is where there is so much suffering, you know. So, and maybe I should uh, talk a little bit of, uh, about the suffering here because uh, uh, when Buddha taught uh, for his teachings, his first teaching, Turning Wheel of the Dharma, was called uh, Four Thoughts, no, uh, four, four Noble Truth. So I'm sure uh, you know what are the Four Noble Truth, the truth of suffering and truth of cause of suffering. Uh, truth of cessation and truth of path. The reason why it's called truth is because uh, it is the, the reality. Suffering that we are experiencing is the truth. And then the suffering that we are experiencing is coming from the cause of suffering. That is the truth. That is the effect. And then in order to uh, free from that suffering, you have to stop the cause and then practice the path. That is the cause for the, the, the cessation or liberation that we are we are looking for, you know. So, a lot of times people are having a hard to understand what is the suffering, you know. So I have a be beautiful life and I'm in enjoying and I can't expect anything better than this. So don't tell me about suffering, you know. I don't want to hear about suffering. I don't have suffering. But that's not, uh, that cannot be true, you know. As long as if you're in samsara, uh, in this world, you do have a suffering. So what Buddha described this suffering uh, into uh, three parts. He says, suffering of all pervasive, and suffering of suffering, and suffering of uh, uh, change. So the sentient beings, including human beings, we have a three uh, type of, um, what do you call, uh, uh, three uh, feelings. A feeling of uh, pleasant, and feeling of unpleasant and neutral. Buddha said, those all three are suffering. The feeling pleasant is uh, called suffering of change. The why? Because feeling pleasant that you have, if you look carefully, it came from temporary cause and condition. So therefore it's not gonna last. Sooner or later, the end of this feeling pleasant will arrive so when that arrives, you will feel the suffering. That's why it's called suffering of change. The suffering of all pervasive is obvious suffering that we are experiencing, like uh, mentally and physically, like headache, you know, pain, uh, sad, and all those are uh, suffering of suffering. The reason why it says suffering of suffering is because uh, uh, the third one, the old, uh, the feeling neutral is a suffering, but it's a subtle. We don't recognize or we don't feel it, but it's suffering because that suffering is a source of uh, suffering of change and suffering of, of suffering, you know. The, the reason why it says suffering of suffering is because we have all pervasive suffering, the feeling neutral, and then the feeling unpleasant becomes double suffering. So the feeling uh, pleasant suffering of change because pleasant feeling change into unpleasant, that is a suffering. So who does have that and everybody have that? You know, no matter what, as long as if you uh, exist and live with these five aggregates, you know, form, um, 
uh, feeling, consciousness, those uh, five, we do have this suffering. So if, if this feeling pleasant is a, a real happiness, then it should last forever. You know? And not only that, it should increase the pleasant and never happen. You know? For example, if you, have a, if you get a brand new house that you never had, what feeling you have? Wow, I have a beautiful home. I've been dreaming this for the last so many years. Now I managed to buy it. I enjoy it very much. But then the next month, you will have a hydro bill and you will have a you know, gas bill and property tax and everything comes. Every time you see all these expensive bills, your heart is beeping, you know. And then every damage, maybe your roof is leaking. And then you call the roofer, he wants fifteen thousand dollars. You know, your drain is broken, then you call somebody else, he wants to treat you five thousand. And then you say, Oh no, maybe I shouldn't have bought this house. Now you really slowly realize how pleasant it was. If if a, if the pleasant of buying the house is real pleasant and then should never have all those sufferings that it can that brings from this you know house. It always increases your happiness. No, it doesn't. And then everything else is like that, right? So that's why Buddha says everything, I mean all those feeling pleasant, as long as they are not a permanent, then it's a suffering. So this suffering is something that we have to recognize. He says suffering is not something that you need to avoid or abandon because it's, it's not a possible, you know. So now you have to look for where does suffering come from. So that's the cause of suffering. Suffering is coming from our negative emotions, you know. Like all those uh, reflective emotions that we have in our mind, like desire, you know, uh, hatred and jealousy, uh, anger, all those they will bring all those and then that, that, that produce the sufferings. So he says you have to cut, get rid of the cause of suffering instead of suffering. So what, in order to do that, what we have to do? We have to do practice the, you know, path. That will bring the cessation, enlightenment, bodhisattva, everlasting happiness, everlasting pleasure, whatever you call, you know, so that you know, and then do those, those, uh, the pr practices. So here the third one we are saying it's a karma, you know, karma cause and effect. So it says uh, what you have now is a result of what you have done in the past and what you're doing now is a cause for the, what, you're gonna, what you're going to get in the future, you know. So that is basically uh, the short explanation uh, of the karma. So then karma, of, of course, it has a different levels. Some are subtle, it's, it's hard to explain, especially like past life, future life. Those are, we can't really say, oh, you're going through this because you have done this in the past. It's hard to say. But certain things we can say and we can feel it, we can recognize it. But whether you can recognize it or not, it's everything, you know. So if you have done good things, you will have a good result. If you are doing bad things, you will have a bad result. The good cause cannot have a bad result. It's impossible, you know. If you plant a medicine seed, cannot grow poison. You know, the cause and, uh, and, and result has to be uh, same. You plant rice, doesn't grow uh, uh, tomato or, you know, or, or, or barley. You plant flower, a flower will grow. If you plant poison, marana, you know, it has to be same. If you have a, if you show somebody bad attitude, the result you won't get a good attitude. You know, if you show somebody bad attitude, you will get a bad attitude back. If you show a good face, good attitude to some people, and you will get, a, you know, good attitude. That is, you know, the simple uh, uh, karma. So therefore, if you want to have a free, better future and a better life for the next life, the afterlives, so we have to do 
uh, good deeds, you know, good karma coming cause. So the fourth one is, uh, it's actually uh, a fault of samsara, which, uh, which I already described. Because when I talk about the suffering, uh, basically it's saying, as long as you are in the samsara, you have suffering. Right? So now that we have the precious human life, but it's subject to change, which is very difficult to arrive. So the next one is impermanent, and then the next one is a coming cause and effect. So the next one is a fault of samsara. So you don't want to be reborn in samsara and experience more suffering, then you create good deeds. Okay, and then The in, because of impermanent, you cannot delay anymore. We don't have a insurance or guarantee that we will have a, the same life that we can practice the Dharma again. So therefore, we have to do it at this moment. We have to start right now while we have this precious human life. So basically, these are the four uh, common preliminary practices. And uh, the next one is... Uh, uncommon preliminary practice. So these have uh, four different uh, chapters, sections. Uh, so usually the Hindu practice, uh, you know, we have those four, we have to recite lots of repetitions. You already know, uh, 100,000. So we have 100,000 prostration, 100,000 uh, refuge prayer, and then we have 100,000 Vajrasattva, 100,000 Mandala offering, 100,000 uh, Guru Yoga practice. So the first one is uh, is the re uh, refuge. So why it says refuge? Everybody needs a refuge. You know, when you are uh, in a situation that is you need a food, you're taking refuge in food. If you need a shelter, you're taking refuge in shelter. If you need a right, you're taking refuge in right. Right? So whenever you need protect from a difficulty. So you need to find a refuge that can protect you from that. But in this case, what do we need protect from? Protect from suffering. So can you take refuge in rich people that can protect you from suffering of samsara? Can you take the refuge in politicians who has a lot of power to protect, you know, from suffering of samsara? No. Why? Because they themselves have the same problem. They cannot do it. You know, power cannot do it. Wealth cannot do it. So then, can you take refuge in your loved ones? Your husband and wife, your kid? Or your best friend? No, they have the same problem, right? So now, who can do it? Whoever freed already from the suffering. So Buddha, enlightened beings already free from suffering. So now we have to take refuge in Buddha. For example, if you need to go to a go to somewhere, somewhere. If you ask somebody who never been there. That person doesn't know how to take you there. But if you ask somebody who has been there many times, or who know how to get there, that will take you there, you know, without any problem. So if you take refuge in, in politicians, or who have a lot of power, or who have a lot of pop, uh, wealth, they cannot do it. Because they themselves are not free from suffering. They're still struggling. Even if they have so much power to change the whole, uh, you know, rules of a country, but they have a much bigger suffering. You know, they have a bigger uh, suffering of suffering. They have a bigger suffering of change. Everything else is multiple, multiplies. You know, we have if, if we have a little suffering of change because we have a little pleasure, little pleasure, but they have a bigger one. And, and they have a bigger suffering. And similarly, those rich people, you know, 
they have so much suffering of uh, multiplying what they have. They have so much suffering of uh, protecting their their wealth, and you know, and they have so much um, uh, a suffering of uh, you know losing or or winning their opponents of whatever you know. But uh, so therefore, what I'm trying to say is they cannot uh, liberate us from samsara. They cannot protect us falling into suffering, some suffering of samsara. So now, basically, the the only persons who can uh, protect you from that is Buddhas and and Bodhisattvas. So, who is Buddha? So that that's important to know. And a lot of times, a lot of times people think there's only one Buddha who came to India 2,500 years ago, achieving enlightenment in Bodhi Gaya, and then who gave lots of teachings. That's the only Buddha. That is historical Buddha who have, you know, helped, who gave all those teachings. But there are countless Buddhas. In the past, you know, like uh, even in our uh, Buddhism, uh, the Lord Buddha Shakyamuni is the, not the first, uh, the Buddha, you know. Even before that, there are hundreds and thousands of, of uh, Buddhas already achieving, enlighten, in, uh, achieving enlightenment. Also, it is happening. So, so Buddha means those who completely abandon every faults, obscurations, mistakes. So you can name it. Every, what do you call it? Obscurations, eh? Is that the right word? Faults. Faults. Obscuration, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Free from, free from every negative, you know. And achieve every quality. So what is Buddha missing? Is he did not miss anything. What is left to him that he still need to abandon? That is a problem or obscure. Nothing, you know. So in, in so 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 once we achieve that level, then we we are. We are Buddha. So until now, we have to take refuge in Buddha, you know. So we have to take refuge in Buddha as teacher. And then the second refuge is the Dharma. Dharma is the teaching that he taught. And then the third one is a Sangha. Sangha is a individuals who are on that path. So why we have to take a refuge in Buddha is because we wanted to be like him, you know, and we wanted to uh, protect or prevent from falling into the samsara realms. So we want to take a refuge in Dharma because we wanted to take the path that Lord Buddha took, you know, same path. After he achieved enlightenment, he gave 84,000 teachings. All those, how to, how to get there. So it's like, a, you know, there's a destination that you really wanted to go. Once you get there, they have everything. You know, you don't need to worry about anything. So that is the enlightenment state, enlightened state. But then you need a path, right? to get there. No matter how beautiful that is, if you don't have the path, you won't get there. So the teaching that he taught is how to get there, that's the path. And then the people who are on that path is we call it Sangha. Of course, the Sangha has a couple of levels. Uh, ordinary Sangha, and, uh, and Supreme Sangha because uh, in a path not everybody achieves the same level 
you know, some are much closer to the enlightenment, some are very far, some are just step on the path, you know, some are maybe stuck, stuck in somewhere down there. They maybe need, you know, help from other sanghas. But for us, if you're a really beginner, everybody is sangha for us. You know, even, even your dumber friends who, who know more than you, who have a better experience, are sangha because they can guide you, you know, to go through the path. So these three, in Buddhism, we say take refuge, means take refuge in these three. Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. I take refuge in Buddha as a teacher, I take refuge in the Dharma as a path, and I take refuge in Sangha as a companion. You know, so basically you're accepting that now you're, you know, accepting as a sang, uh, Buddha as your teacher, and Dharma as a path, and Sangha as your companion or your guide. So, so in this process, this mudra practice, uh, the first one is a refuge and prostration. So, so these four preliminary practices are actually uh, supposed to make you for proper foundation for the further practice or active practice. So we as an ordinary sentient beings, we do have a lot of negative uh, mm, emotions, you know. Because we have been with those negative emotions for so long. So we have anger, anger, we have hatred, we have a jealousy, we have, you know, all this uh, desire and so on. We do have it. But we have to somehow purify them. To make ourselves for proper foundation for the precious practice, precious, pre precious dharma. So the four, four preliminary practices are, you know, I would say method of uh, of doing this. So the first we have uh, the refuge, so Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. But then in Vajrayana tradition we have a, not only three year. Uh, object or three object of refuge. We have a, f a six. We have Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, and we have um, a Guru, and we have a Dharma protector, and we have uh, Yidam deities. In Vajrayana tradition, uh, we have a three root to a refuge and three roots, these uh, uh, Lama and Yidam and Dakas and Dakinis we call uh, three roots. Basically they are representing the three jewels. Uh, Guru is representing, for example, I mean, you know, Buddha came to this world, Buddha Shakyamuni, 2500 years ago. And if you wanted to receive teaching from him, He's not there. And then if you want to receive teachings from other Buddhas like uh, Buddha Amitabha, Buddha Amitai or Akshobhya, we don't see them. So we cannot achieve, receive blessings or teachings from him. So now we have representing for Buddha, our Guru, our present Guru can be supposed to be the representing the Buddha because he's passing the teaching that Buddha taught to us and showing us. And then the Yidam practice is a, Yidam is, is a visualization, you know, visualization deities. Uh, if you're familiar with the Tibetan Buddhism, we have a generation stage and dissolution stage and so on. So these Yidam practices are actually representing the Dharma. It's another way of practice. So, 
Buddha said every living sentient being have the potential to be Buddha, potential to be enlightenment, potential, uh, uh, potential to be better life, better human being. We all have it. We have that precious seed within us. But we never used it, we never discovered, we never realized. So Yadam Deity, the visualizing Yadam Deity and then dissolving into you as a method to recognizing your own true nature, you know, generation stage and dissolution stage. That was supposed to slowly recognize that you are not who you are. You are way more precious than what you think you are. Your nature and Buddha nature are same. Your nature is Buddha nature. You know, your consciousness, your mind is never polluted, always pure, precious. But we haven't discovered yet. So the Yidam deity practice is a method of discord, uh, discovering or, or you know, recognizing our own true nature. You know, meditating on Four Noble Truth, suffering, cause of suffering, a path, um, a cessation, and then practice on generosity, practice on patience, practice on diligence, practice on the concentration, meditation, wisdom. Those are one way of practice. But then the shortcut way of a practice is Yidam practice. So that's why the Vajrayana practice, by the practice, the Vajrayana, you can achieve enlightenment in one lifetime. Just like many great masters in the past, like Miladepa, Marpa, and all those uh, uh, Indian great masters who achieve enlightenment in one lifetime by practicing the Vajrayana uh, tradition, the shortcut. So then the Dharma protectors are, are representing the Sangha. Okay? We have the Sangha to guide us through the journey. But in Vajrayana tradition, we have Dharma protectors, uh, Dakas and Dakinis. They protect us from getting lost into a state of ignorance, anger, hatred, and jealousy. So they bring us into the right path. So that's why we take the religion Buddha Dharma Sangha and Lama Yidam Dharma Protection Interest. So what do we have to do is we have to visualize all those in front of us and then we do prostration. 100,000 prostration. So the reason why we have to do prostration like this is basically first recognizing those who have a better quality, accepting, you know, and then accepting you, you are lower, you have less quality than enlightened beings, because we do have an ego, you know. Our ego thinks always we are the best, you know. <laughs> Nobody allowed to tell me anything wrong. Even if I am doing wrong, we never thought, we never realized. Whenever there's a problem, you always find to point out, he did this or she did this. That's why we have a problem. You never say, because I have done this. That's why the problem. You know, our ego is so strong completed a ball that has no hole to get anything inside. You know, our ego is like that. So now this, by doing refuge, so basically the qualities of others, you know, enlightened beings, accepting the qualities of others, accepting faults and mistakes of ourselves, and accepting our ego, now what you're basically doing is you are better and I'm, you know, 
Uh, how do you say? I don't like the word saying. I'm. I'm. An, I don't like the word worse. I'm not worst. Less. The less. You know. So now I respect you completely with the bowing down. You know, touching all four branches of my body, head, forehead, and two two hands and two two legs. So when we keep on doing this. Hundred thousand times, the supposedly, uh, you know, cut, cut our ego, you know, realizing the qualities of all the enlightened beings. So that is one of the best way to accumulating our merit. So basically, it's a uh, yeah, accumulating our merit. You know, everything is, is a cause and effect. So if we do that way, then eventually it will reduce our ego, you know. So ego is always a problem anywhere, you know. Look in Russia, you know. What is Putin doing? It's out of his ego, you know. Look at Chinese president, out of his ego, you know. The China is so rich, but still not enough, you know. Russia is so powerful, but still not enough. They want more, you know, out of their ego. The human mind, the desire that you, we human beings have no limit. No matter how much you have it, you never think I have enough. It's the same for all of us, you know. It, we have so much problem of of accepting other people's quality and their achievement, their realization. Even like to your 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 brother, you know, or, or, or your sister or your your neighbor. If your neighbor has something better than you, you may go there with a the flower and say, Congratulations, I'm so happy for you. But in your mind, let me say how I can uh, have something better than this, you know. <laughs> now you have that idea building more and more that you wanted to have a better, I don't know, better house, a better car. You will work on this slowly. That's out of our, you know, jealousy and our, our ego, you know, our desire. You don't turn around and say, hey, what I have is enough. I don't need it, you know, we don't say that. Because that's why we're always confused with what we need and what we want. What you want is you always think, I need it. I can't live without this. But that's not the fact, you know. So, so here, uh, So the visualization is actually you have we you have to visualize a tree with one root and five branches. Just like that. So that is how you visualize uh, uh, the refugee tree, we call it refugee tree, the five branches. At the middle one, there is Guru. Uh, and guru in Kuruli, a present Guru and all the lineage Gurus, lineage Lamas, Masters, right from the Vajradhara. And then your back, there is a, a, the right Buddha, a left Sangha, behind the tree a Dharma, and then front Dharma protectors, uh, Yidam, and then uh, lower there is Dharma protectors. So these five branches of the trees, actually uh, five what do you call it? 
you know, yeah, uh, the refuge to groups Buddha Dharma Sangha, uh, Lama Yidam uh, protector. So five branches. So you visualize all of those in front of you, and then you you do the prostration. So then also, when we do prostration, and we don't think only me doing, but all sentient beings who are in samsara, who are in a suffering, they are doing together with me, but I'm leading. So that everybody is following me, and I'm doing the prostration. So we do 100,000 times. So the, the prayer it's saying is I take refuge in Buddha, I take refuge in Dharma, I take refuge in Sangha, I take refuge in Lama, I take refuge in Yidam, I take refuge in Dharma protectors. And then after that there's a Bodhisattva, I mean Bodhicitta practice, which is saying that uh, until reach enlightenment I take refuge in Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. Mm. Just the way all the past Buddhas and Bodhisattvas did their Bodhisattva vow, Bodhisattva pra Bodhisattva practice, I wanted to do the same way. I will do the justice they did. So basically, this is uh, the refuge uh, practice. Um, yeah. So I think I will just stop talking here. And if you want to ask a question, you can. Lama Tenzin, yes. the, the tree that you just described for the visualization, the prostrations, and then we have this tree. Mm -hmm. Do is there a representation you of that tree? You point at that. Because I wondered if maybe I missed that. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay, that's no. it. Okay, that's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to look. bring those next yeah. week. I'm going to bring the handouts of the Kaju lineage tree. Okay. So the Dharma, when you're if you're visualizing Dharma, you said it's behind. The Dharma is then represented. Dharma is the, the prayer books. The prayer books. Prayer books piling behind the tree. Okay, I, the I prayer mean the, books. The, 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 the back tree. branch. Mm -hmm. Okay, the behind branch. Yeah, okay. back see branch. Them here? Oh, oh, here. No, this yeah, is, these two this corners. This is the yeah. Dharma here. That's You'll see like all the Dharma we have up there. Yeah. The, oh, yeah, okay. Those, those there. Okay, okay. That's, so there's the Buddha. These are all the Buddhas, right? No, these are Lamas. That's, no, okay, this lamas. is just, well, this is the Buddhas here. Uh, no, these are all Lamas. But this is the lineage. Yeah, lineage. they're all um, gurus, lineage masters. Yeah, Marpa Mila. Yeah, Before starting Mila. from Vajradhara, Dorje Chang, Trelo, Naro, yeah. Marpa Mila, all those are lineage masters. Okay, so yeah. that's... And Dorje Chang in the middle, the Vajradhara, the one in Vajradhara in the middle, is supposed to be inseparable of your present root guru. And that's who you visualize when yes. you do it in the Inseparable, yeah. Your Lama as this as Bhagavad. Yes. Okay. So then you will look at the right, there's Buddhas. Uh, no no no. Uh, right, right, the bottom, right. bottom. Yeah. yeah, yeah that Buddhas. one is the Buddhas. Yeah. Buddhas. Uh, and then the other side, Sangha. Sangha. Okay. The branch right here. The lower yeah. there. Yeah, there. Sangha. Yeah, that yeah. this is the deities. This yeah. is no, this I, is Chenrezy. Yeah, the, these are the Sanghas. That's the sanghas. Okay. Yeah, these yeah. are... These are protectors. Uh, and then and the, the Yedams are the right Yedams in front. Right below Vajradhara. These yes. Are yeah, yeah. And who do we got up here? These are part of the, the Daki Kagyu? Yes, yeah, these are the Dakinis. Mm -hmm. So bottom there's um, you know there's a lake that the tree is at the middle of the lake 
and then you including sentient beings including yourself oh, yeah. is around the lake right and doing the prostitution okay and also s saying a refuge prayer yes refuge prayer and prostitution at the same time okay so do they all count as a hunt does each one count if uh, if it's not perfectly visualized and every prostration counts every prostration counts <laughs> I don't know. If your mind is doing the dishes, <laughs> sir. Mind is doing the the prostration. <laughs> these three things you have to do the same time. Again. Refuge. I mean the the prostration. It's reciting the re reciting refuge prayer and visualization has to be <laughs> three things at the same time. You know your body, speech, mind. All of these three has to work at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And it's not really 100,000, it's 108,000, right? Well, it's supposed to be 100,000, but to make sure you have enough 100,000, so we do 110,000. Oh, 110? Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Just in case you lost count. I'm yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> That's what I do when I'm swimming. If I, st if I lose count, I just add more, just in case. Yeah, if I, yeah, I do too. <laughs> Same idea, honest yeah. and hard. That's good. <laughs> Well, if we don't have a question, I think we'll just do a little dedication. Page number 23, I guess. Yes.